after going through the module you shall be understanding the concept of low level of equilibrium trap secondly the relationship between rate of growth of population and per capita income the relationship between rate of output and per capita income relationship between direct additional capital per capita and per capita income the working of the theory of low level of equilibrium trap and lastly the criticism of the theory of low level of equilibrium trap now beginning our discussion richard r nelson in his theory low level of equilibrium trap that he outlined in 1956 argued that if we look at the third world countries there exists a vicious circle of poverty where poverty is the cause and effect of poverty in order to pull the these third world countries out of the trap an investment over and above a certain minimum is required and only then it will have the capacity of moving the economy on higher paths of economic development he stressed on the balanced growth strategy wherein large investment are made through way of synchronized application of capital to cater to complementarities of demand he revealed certain structural characteristics that are peculiar to the third world countries and these characteristics are first that population growth is a function of per capita income of the country there exists a positive relationship between population growth and per capita income at the initial stages of development that is as the per capita income increases rate of growth of population also increases after that with increase in per capita income rate of growth of population is constant till a certain level beyond that level with further rise in the per capita income population growth will fall as can be seen in this figure where in on the x axis we have the per capita income and on the y axis the rate of growth of population initially the economy is stable at subsistence levels at point s that is at a low level of income as the per capita income increases the population growth also increases population growth reaches maximum point at t level of per capita income and thereafter it remains constant at that level till r levels of per capita income if the per capita income increases beyond r then the rate of growth of population actually falls his second postulate is addition to the capital stock that takes place in two forms one by the increase in the quantum of natural resources which he assumes to be negligible and second by the savings created capital per capita this letter savings created capital per capita is roughly the same as investment in the industrial sector that is it represents addition to stock of tools and equipments hence he assumes that addition to the capital stock is equal to savings created capital per capita which assumes the graphical relationship with per capita income as can be seen on the x axis we have per capita income and on the y axis we have savings created capital per capita till m levels of per capita income there are dis savings which are equal to minus c if the per capita income increases then savings per capita is linearly correlated to it the third postulate is regarding output growth wherein the output is a function of factors of production which are assumed to be labor and capital and the production function can be written as o equals to t and a function of labor and capital where o stands for output t stands for index of technical productivity l is labor and k stands for capital now in the graph at s levels of per capita income the economy is at subsistence level 
with rate of growth of population and rate of growth of output equal to 0 that is stationary. When the per capita income exceeds the S level then due to increases in labor supply and growth of savings created capital per capita the output in the economy initially increases then reaches a maximum point Z and then falls. Nielsen postulated that there is availability of arable uncultivable land in the third world countries. As the population grows, more and more land is brought under cultivation and hence the supply of land becomes smaller and smaller. However, he also claimed that the techniques of production used by the third world countries are obsolete and inefficient. He further postulated that there is certain inertia at both economic and cultural levels in the third world countries. People are fatalist and risk averse and due to which the investors are shy in making huge investments. Let us now discuss the working of Nielsen's model with the help of this graph. Nielsen argued that initially the third world countries are operating at the subsistence level of equilibrium which is S. With the working of forces motivated to achieving a greater economic development, if the per capita income rises between OS and OL, then there is this tendency of the economy to move back to the original level which is S. This is so because between OS and OL the rate of growth of population is higher than the rate of growth of output. So Nielsen propagated that if the third world countries want to move to higher and sustained levels of income, any developmental investment must be able to bring about a rise in the per capita income beyond this OL point. He further argued that positive impact on growth of economy would continue till OM levels of per capita income. So OL according to him measures the strength of trap for the third world countries beyond which they can achieve a sustained growth of per capita income. Nielsen suggested few strategy measures that ensure the third world countries to reach that level of sustained economic development. He stressed on the need for stabilizing socio-political conducive environment in the country. Secondly, he favored the route of foreign aid to raise the capital and output by obtaining funds from abroad, that is, particularly international institutions. He suggested that third world countries should use the latest methods of production vigilantly so as to make productive use of the latest resources that are congenial to its growth and prosperity. He further suggested that third world countries need to adopt such methods that help them change their distribution of income in the desired direction. Lastly, he also argued that changes in the social structure of the society can be brought about with emphasis on large social overhead investment by the government and breaking the socio-economic and cultural inertia. However, the model given by Nielsen has been criticized by H.L. Mint on the grounds that first, the application of theory to third world countries is not easily possible as it is not possible to establish a functional relation between rate of growth of per capita income and the rate of growth of population. The main factor of growth of population is that death rate has declined in recent times due to improvement in public health and control of epidemics. Secondly, the functional relationship between level of per capita income and rate of growth of output is not 
as simple as is assumed by Nielsen. Mint argued that this relationship is highly complex and it takes place in two steps wherein in the first step the relationship between level of per capita income and rate of growth of savings gets modified by a number of factors such as the pattern of income distribution and efficiency and effectiveness of financial institutions in mobilization of savings. Secondly, the relationship between invention and resultant output depends upon a stable overall capital output ratio rather than the extent to which a productive organization of the country is improved and to what degree land saving innovations can be adopted to check the operation of diminishing returns. Mint also argued that if the time element is introduced in Nelson's model, then it creates problems in analysis. For instance, growth in population and growth in income over the period of time might change the functional relationship between the two variables. Moreover, if the time factor is taken into account, the movement from L to M as was shown in the working of the model will be accompanied by permanent and irreversible additions to capital stock and skills and other variables. Lastly, he argued that Nielsen's model neglects the role of state completely. Let us now summarize the main points of Nielsen's model. The theory postulates that the underdeveloped countries are entrapped in the vicious circle of poverty due to which their growth is stagnant at the subsistence level of output at which the rate of growth of savings and capital is low. According to the theory, the only way to pull the economy out of this trap is to make a certain minimum level of investment. If the additional investment is less than a specific amount, then any developmental effort by these economies will fail and the economies will move back to the subsistence level of output. The theory emphasizes on the structural inefficiencies present in the underdeveloped countries, which are the reason for its backwardness. The theory also assumes few important relationships between various economic variables like rate of growth of population and per capita income. However, their applicability to the underdeveloped countries is debatable. To break low level of equilibrium trap, Rosestein Rodin and Harvey Levistein had given the theory of big push and critical minimum effort thesis respectively. As has been suggested earlier, this vicious trap at low levels of income can be broken by a strategy of balanced growth and both the models emphasize on the same. Whereas Big Push suggests a heavy one-time investment, critical minimum thesis suggests critical minimum efforts at certain intervals to pull the economy out of this trap.